Good morning everybody, it's your salty neighbor giant here with yet another video about Ashes of Creation. And this time around we actually do have some stuff that I want to talk about. We got a buttload of information now that Note Month is finally over. That was not a month, that was just a day. They lied to us. All we got is one day of new information. Wait, wait, wait. Entitled Giant, is that you? Where do you come from? We got a whole bunch of new information this month. We got two new blog posts, we got that live stream. So what, what do you mean we only got one day of information? What are you talking about? Talking about that rehashed blog post and the other one. It was a bunch of old information, just tiny pieces of new information. I feel so cheated. I waited a whole month for just a Q&A, like come on, what's going on here, I deserve more. You know what Entitled Giant, you need to shut it, be happy what we got, it was a whole bunch of good information, I know it was just a Q&A, but hey dude, there were so many questions that were answered and so much new information, you should be happy we got something, you freaking Entitled Jerk. You know what? Fuck you, you freaking white knight. I'm going to some other game. Screw you. I've got to come back when there is more. I want cinematics and orc skins and stuff. I want stuff. Stuff. Okay, I have to apologize for that one. That was a little bit weird. I don't know where that guy came from. So, yeah, let's go right into what I want to talk about. So, first up, um, if you want to read through the last live stream, I will post the complete live uh, transcript from the Ashes post. And if you want to watch uh, Jaylon's complete analysis of what was said, what sort of information we got, I will link that down below as well. Those two things you should definitely watch and check out. And let's jump right into the things that I want to talk about. I want to mostly talk about the last live stream and a couple questions that were answered, a couple questions that I thought are pretty damn awesome. And that's about it because sadly, I have to say that the blog posts we gotten over the past month were mostly just old information rehashed with a couple of new things added to them, which is fine. It's fine for new players it's great that they're now you know dishing out information on a regular basis from a core community and to your veteran point of view it's meh but i'm happy with what we got especially the live stream which was mostly just a q a which a lot of people apparently you know reacted kind of poorly to i did find great because we did get a lot of new information i didn't watch it live because sadly i had to work but i rewatched the whole thing afterwards and i have to say there's really some really good stuff in there some really good stuff so before we get into this and um, write down in the comments what was your favorite part of the live stream what question did you like the most and then i'm probably gonna comment on it and start a whole discussion about it because like i said there is a lot of new information within that last live stream within that transcript on the ashen post so i want to get into just a couple of these questions that i feel have a really big influence on what's to come when the game releases so let's jump right into it so the first question that i want to go through is what would happen if a server merge would have to go down and i know a lot of people are already kind of speculating oh no they're kind of already thinking about server merging oh no oh no this is a bad sign to those people i would like to say um shut up like straight up shut up it's not a bad sign it's actually a pretty smart thing to already think about what you would have to do when it comes to server merge in case you have to merge servers because of well maybe the game is not doing so great but you still want to have a good experience for everybody that is on those two set servers that are merging. So the answer Steven got, or the answer we got and the answer Steven gave was two scenarios. The first one being that the dominant server would take over and the other one that both servers would start over at zero. If you ask me personally, I prefer the second one that everybody has to go back to zero. I know a server merge is a bad thing. Nobody's gonna like that. Nobody's gonna be happy about such a thing. But I think the good way to do such a thing is especially in a world like ashes of creation where you knew and you will know and you will get to learn that that everything you do has an impact at some point you know the world changes because of that i think it's a good idea that everything gets back set to zero and everybody has to start over because you don't want to go into a server where some guys already spend hours and they change the world you know to a degree where you're like ah this sucks so i think going back to zero is a good approach and if it ever comes to that on a server that i'm playing on i hope they will 
will go with that method. So the next question that I found really interesting was for coastal nodes, will they encompass parts of the seas? And Steven said, yes, they will be. Seas and the ocean will be apparently be split in two types, regional waters and international waters. So that means if you are part of a coastal node, part of your zone will be water, which I find kind of interesting because, you know, I always wanted to be like a pirate, roam the seas and roll my R's. I don't know why I sound like a Scotchman now, but I guess I do. This is how we roll from now on. This is the thing. This is what we will do now. Uh, sorry, it's it's the weekend and I get kind of weird. So let's just move on and skip that part. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So the next question that came up that I did find quite interesting was, will we be able to organize two positions during assaults like in Total War? And Steven said, no, that will not be the case. Raid leaders won't be able to put us in different positions, formations, and yada, 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 like in an RTS game. But he also said that there might be something regarding that sort of option when it comes to NPC. On that part, I like the idea, and Steven said um, it's not confirmed yet. But on the other hand, I am kind of thinking, okay, you got over 500 people possible in a in a in a siege fight, and then you also want to add NPCs. That just screams a lot of issues because for example, if you go back to Guild Wars 2, and those fights are somewhat big, and as soon as you know add NPCs to the mix, it's even gonna be you know harder on your GPU, CPU. So I'm kind of interested to see how they will tackle that whole thing if it gets confirmed, if they're really planning on doing it. So I'm going to keep an eye on for that. I out. I out. Sorry, I did not have my coffee yet. I woke up and I started to press record. I'm sorry. I need coffee. Somebody get me coffee, please. Somebody, please, somebody. Fuck you. You don't deserve coffee. Get your own shit. So there's one more question that came up that I found kind of funny because I knew that was the case since Steven first started talking about no and node communities. Somebody asked, how can small guilds build up nodes like larger guilds? And the question pretty much is, you can't. If you're a small guild, you won't be able to build up a node all by yourself. You might be able to take a castle, but a node, that's a whole different story. This is, I think this is something that people need to understand. Unless you run a multi-thousand people community or guild, you won't be able to establish a metro or a good size node by yourself. You need to start looking into a line guild communities, node communities, and base it on that. You might be able to take a castle and that might be something for you if you don't want your guild to elaborate and you know work together with other guilds. But as far as now, from what I understand, from what Steven gave as an answer, you as a single player, single guild won't be able to raise a node by yourself. Well, you could, but you won't be as efficient as a node that has six or seven guilds working together to you know level up the node. So there's one more piece of information that we gotten this path mountains that is quite new and changed a lot of things when it comes to ashes of creation which was till now we thought if you lose a siege you were no just the levels now we learned and this is a change that intrepid did that if you lose a siege well you're fucked you're done bye bye your note is destroyed it's back to level zero which now you know this creates a whole different universe of uh, possibilities, which I found quite interesting because now, you know, you fight for your damn survival. Because if you are level 4 or 5 node and you get destroyed during a siege, either, you know, start over again or go somewhere else. And this is going to create so much conflict and I cannot wait to see how people will react to this. Can you imagine you spend a couple months building up a node, you're level 5, 6, you know, you're close to Metro maybe, and then, you know, you get sieged and all that hard work and effort, hours on hours, is just gone. I can already see it and I'm really looking forward to testing this out. So the last question that I want to go through is somebody asked, how many buildings can I build on my freehold and Steven said roughly between four and five but he also pointed out that you need to figure out what would be the best buildings to fit onto your freehold to get the most benefits out of it. He used the term synergy which I kind of get now for example if you are a blacksmith you know and you craft a lot of iron weapons you have no need for a windmill or something that has nothing to do with your job for example an alchemist would never put a horse ranch on his freehold because that would take away a spot and it would you know you would miss out on something so i think they're going with that whole thing so for example if you see a blacksmith freehold and that is and it only has buildings on it that have 
that have to do with blacksmithing, you can pretty much assure, or you, you can be sure that the person who owns the freehold is a dedicated blacksmith. So I'm really, I really like the idea because it reminds me a little bit of Wildstar. Maybe not in the scale of the Wildstar housing system, but I always like the Wildstar housing system. So I hope it will be similar to that, that I can place a couple of big buildings, but I can also, you know, put little details on the walls, you know, like dead elf heads, you know, something like that on the wall to make my wall look nice. So, yeah, I am really looking forward to testing out the freehold and the housing system in Ashes of Creation. So, yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Those were all the questions that I felt like I want to talk about. Let me know in the comments what you thought were the best questions during the live stream. Let me know what you thought about the information we got this month. If you want, you can hop on my Discord and, you know, we can start talking about Ashes on there. Be more than happy to talk to anybody about Ashes. As long as it's a good topic, I'm down. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch because, you know, the podcast every two weeks, the Ashes of Creation discussion round. We're going to have a lot of things to talk about tonight. So, yeah, I'm going to go throw this into my video editing software. I'm going to try to upload this as fast as possible. So, yeah, guys, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you on the Ashes of Creation community Discord. You still suck. Nobody likes you. Go back to World of Warcraft.